Do large language models equal AI? Yes, but a lot of content creators like myself or journalists or even media at large, when we talk specifically about large language models, we often use the term AI. But is large language models a synonym to artificial intelligence? I'm making this video to show once and for all where in the whole AI space, where does large language model sit, as well as generative AI, which is another popular term thrown around. The first thing to know is different types of AI. We classify AI into two types. One is based on ability and one is based on functionality. This confuses a lot of people as well because when we talk about type of AI, which is based on ability, some aspect of that same AI that we are talking about is part of the second type of AI based on functionality. For example, Tesla Autopilot is the type of limited memory AI based on functionality, but based on ability, it would be narrow AI. Self-driving cars use memory to store information about recent events like nearby car speeds and positions and make decisions based on that data. On another hand, theory of mind is an area of research with a few social robots like Sophia by Hanson Robotics designed to understand and respond to human emotions and engage in social interactions. Currently, these systems would still be considered narrow AI as we do not yet fully achieve human-like understanding and adaptability. So those two separate types really overlap in many cases. In this video, I'm going to focus on the type of AI based on ability. So we have narrow AI or sometimes called weak AI. We also have artificial general intelligence and artificial super intelligence or ACI. The thing is that the most common use of AI is actually narrow AI. So you can think of all the most popular applications of AI today, like chatbots or mid-journey or assembly AI, ChatGPT, Synthesia, and so on. We have multiple areas of narrow AI that we should look at from the perspective of a task. Most known is natural language processing. It enables computers to understand, interpretate, and generate human language. Then we have computer vision. Computers are able to interpretate and understand visual information from images and videos. When you upload an image to ChatGPT and it can see what's in that image. Then we have robotics. And robotics combines AI with physical embodiment. The other term is used embodied AI. And the whole goal is to create intelligent machines that interact with the environment. By the way, that environment doesn't need to be necessarily physical. It can also be virtual or simulation of physical environment. And then we have expert systems, which probably you don't hear much about today, but it has been one of the, let's say, most popular techniques or methods used when we were talking about AI. And expert systems emulate the decision-making ability for human experts in a specific domain. But there is one more area that emerged that you probably heard of, generative AI. The key task here is to create new data or content, if you like, including text, images, and way more. In this area, we also find large language models, which are usually used for generative tasks, which makes them also a generative model. And I want to show you one very interesting graph. Looking broadly at AI from different perspectives, the timeline kind of looks that we emerge with one technique and AI becomes like this really area of focus and then it dies out. And then these gaps, these two gaps, we call AI winter. So we had first AI winter here in around 1970s-ish in that period and then in 2000s. And these three spikes that we've seen so far are based on different perspectives when we look at AI. So the first spike that we experienced was really looking at AI from psychological or neurological perspective. The big question was, can we create mechanical brain? This period was kickstarted by the birth of neural networks, a computer system modeled on the human brain and our nervous system. Now, the second one was more on the cognitive. Can we create machines that can reason? By the way, we still don't have machines that can reason at the human level. But in the both cases, the decline we saw in popularity of these AI systems have been driven partially by the lack of compute power. Think GPUs and NVIDIA today. Now, the third explosion, what we are seeing now, is called deep learning, which is one area of machine learning. The history of machine learning goes all the way back to 1952. And the key component here is neural networks. Deep learning is a powerful tool within machine learning that utilizes deep neural networks and was possible because of increased computing power. And the question that we ask here is, can we create machines that can learn tasks based on large amounts of data? My own experience working in big data analytics, I've seen this shift where we went from expert systems and our data scientists started experimenting with deep learning and specifically dynamic pricing systems because we had the largest historical data set on airline fares. 
Now, to achieve all these tasks, we need tools. And this is where machine learning and deep learning comes into the picture. An interesting thing, you can see this like dip here. I wouldn't say this is so accurate because nobody knows and whoever predicts when the dip happens is just speculating. But I would say that the peak here would be much more accurate for 2022 than for 2019. And to just explain to you why I think that, when we are looking at the job market and actual positions, what we are seeing right now, and this is from the Stanford Index report, the emergence of machine learning job positions and the dip really happening in 2023. Again, this doesn't need to mean that much because majority of big tech companies already hired their senior staff in machine learning. And we also saw some layoffs. Take this statistic as a grain of salt, but I think key takeaway here is how big of a role machine learning actually plays when we are talking about artificial intelligence. Okay, so now to find large language models, we need to look into the subset of machine learning, which is deep learning. We have artificial neural networks, we have convolutional neural networks, and we have recurring neural networks as well as transformers. If you're interested in learning more about all these different neural networks or large language models, Brilliant, the sponsor of this video, is really where you learn by doing. The thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analytics, programming, and of course, AI. They have a whole learning path on computer science and programming, which has five different levels and 11 courses in it. At level five, you will find introduction to neural networks and even quantum computing. Also, one of their new immersive AI workshops is how large language models work. If you're interested to go deeper and learn more in a fun and engaging way, to try everything what Brilliant has to offer free for full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash gotta go or click the link in the description box below. You will also get 20% off on the annual premium subscription. Now, if we want to find large language models, we look at transformers. And we have different large language models. One is GPT, which stands for Generative Pre-trained Transformer. We have BERT and then T5. The transformer models were invented by Google and more specifically DeepMind and gave birth to transformer neural networks where text is converted to numerical representations called tokens that you now see everywhere. Then OpenAI used that research to develop generative pre-trained transformers for OpenAI. There are other companies that have developed their own generative pre-trained transformers. Fun fact is that OpenAI actually tried to trademark GPT, the whole category as their own, which I think says something about the whole company strategy and being super aggressive. But when you hear GPT, think about it that there are GPTs that OpenAI is branding and there is the whole category of research and method and technique called generative pre-trained transformer models. So to summarize, when you're talking with somebody and you're talking about artificial intelligence, which I imagine many people have those conversations, hopefully you can use this information to clarify that there are different types of AI. The majority of AI that we see today is narrow or weak AI and that large language models is based on transformer architecture, but there are more techniques and methods that people are working on, which maybe one day we will also use as a synonym to AI. But for now, in the next video, I'm breaking down artificial general intelligence and super intelligence and how some of it is science fiction and who besides OpenAI is working on AGI too.